Today we're going to look at what we can do to rectify the situation when we run out of disk space on a PDM archive server. So this may be that you've discovered that you're running out of disk space because users can't check files into a vault, or you may be considering moving these archive folders prior to a planned migration, or you may be doing it as a proactive measure to avoid running out of disk space in the future. But in any case, we're going to walk through the steps and considerations of the different techniques in this video. So we have the option to relocate some or all of the archive folders to another drive. And we're going to show you two ways that we can do this operation. Both options have some pros and cons, but essentially we can either use the built-in tool, which is a little more simple, or we can perform the operations manually, which gives us more control over each step of the process and allows us to see exactly what's happening as we go along. So in the way of disclaimers and warnings, I'd suggest you go through this entire video and or read our entire article for this subject before you begin the process. This will make sure that you're fully aware of what's involved and allow you to plan ahead accordingly. As a precaution, we should always take a backup of the SQL database as well as the archive folders before we make any changes to our PDM environment. We also need to take the time to determine how much data needs to be moved and estimate based on that the time it's going to take to move that data, that way we can avoid impacting normal working hours. It's critical to ensure that all users are logged out of PDM and no one is able to log in while the process is being completed. Any attempt to get files, perform check-ins, checkouts, or other operations on files can cause major issues while these archive folders are being moved. You don't have to check in all files before you go through this particular process. But personally, I like to make sure that all files are checked in if possible, and this is a good opportunity to make sure that those files have been checked in recently. As a side note, users should be checking in all of their files on a regular basis, at minimum once a week, but I suggest doing this every workday as a best practice. This will ensure that you have good version information, so if you need to roll back changes, you can roll those back on a more granular basis. It also ensures that if something happens to a user's computer, they have data backups of their work. If a person has a file checked out and they've been working on it for a week without checking it back in and their computer crashes, they're gonna lose a week's worth of work. Let's talk for a minute about how data is stored. For the examples in this video, we're gonna use a vault that we've named ProVault. I've chosen to store my PDM data in a folder under the root of the C drive named PDM data. Now if we browse to the root of the vault archive folder and then into the folder matching our vault name, we can see that there are 16 folders and they're named 0 through 9 and A through F or alpha through foxtrot in the root of the vault data folder. These 16 folders correspond to a set of registry entries that tell the archive server where on the physical disk a particular file is stored. The database keeps a record of what archive folder houses which files, and as files are added to the vault, the archive server automatically distributes them across these 16 folders. That allows us to distribute the data across up to 16 different storage locations in roughly 6.25% increments. It's important to remember that file sizes can vary greatly, so the actual size on disk is not going to be exactly 6.25%, but it gives you a general guideline for data usage. In most cases, it's preferable to keep archive folders on a single drive for ease of management, but if you're limited in your ability to add capacity to an existing drive, you can distribute the load across up to 16 separate logical drives. So before we jump into the process, we need to make sure all users are logged out of the PDM vault. So that's what we need to do before we begin these steps. I suggest planning this in advance if possible so that we can nicely ask all PDM users to check all their documents in and then log out at a specified time. In order to verify that all users have logged out, we can use the Solid Network License Manager application to review license usage. Open your Solid Network License Manager tool, click on the License Usage tab, and in the Product drop-down menu, select each of the applicable PDM license types one by one making sure there are none in use. If there are any licenses in use, the computer name and username are listed, so you can make contact with the users and ask them to log out. Keep in mind that if users have the option to automatically log in to the PDM Vault enabled, 
You may need them to restart their computer and wait to log on to Windows until after you've disabled logins to the vault. So now that we've made sure everybody's logged out, we're going to disable logins to the PDM vault. We'll do that in the PDM administration tool. Simply right click on the name of the vault we want to relocate the archive files for, and then select properties. If we haven't already logged in, we're going to need to log into the vault with an administrator level account. Now we're going to click the block logins button and confirm that the block status field says logins are blocked. So now that we've made sure that users are not logged in and they can't log back in, we can start to move the archive data. Again, we have two main options at this point. Option one is to use the built-in tool within the archive server configuration app. And option two is to perform these steps manually. Depending on whether you're simply moving the archive folders to another drive, splitting up the folders across multiple drives, or maybe you just want more visibility on what's happening, you can choose to do it either way. Option one requires less input by the user, but option two provides more granular control and visibility over the process, which can be a benefit, particularly if your data set's very large. For example, you could perform the data migration in multiple phases, moving one or more of the archive folders each session to avoid impacting vault availability during working hours. In either case, you'll need to be logged on locally or remotely to the archive server, and so that's what we need to do next. So here's where we're going to start with option one or the easy button for moving our archive folders. We're going to open up the archive server configuration app. If you've already started it in this session of Windows, it may not open immediately. So if you click on the archive server configuration app in the start menu and it doesn't open, look down in the task tray. And if you see the icon for it showing, you can right or left click on that icon and choose open. Now we're going to expand the archives so that we can see our vault name in the right hand pane. Then we're going to right click on the vault name in question and select relocate. At this point, we can either change the existing path, which will move all of the archive folders at once. And we can do this by typing a new path in the path field or clicking the ellipsis button and then browsing to the desired path. Now, if we need to split data across multiple locations, we'll click the add button and again, either type or browse to a new path name and repeat this as many times as necessary for the number of desired locations to be used. At this point, we can select each one of those paths listed on the left side of the screen and then drag the percentage slider to distribute the archive data as desired. Again, this will be done in 6.25% increments. We need to adjust it until the total size shown on the right hand side of the screen is 100 and there's a green dot. As long as there's a red dot and the number does not equal 100%, you won't be able to click OK to continue. So once we click OK, we're going to be prompted to ensure that there are no users accessing the file vault. We've already taken care of that, so we're going to click OK to start the relocation. And we can see a progress bar, and it indicates the status of each archive folder transfer. We're going to talk more about what's happening in the background in the option two process, but basically this is changing registry entries and moving data from the old location to the new location or locations. Once this operation is complete, the window will close, but you won't see any other messages. And this lets us know the archive data has been moved. If you want to examine the locations of an archive, you can always right click on that PDM vault name, choose relocate, and then review the location information. Just click cancel if you don't want to change anything. So our second option is more of a manual process, and this is going to involve using a registry editor and RoboCopy. Again, this is a great option if you like to have more control over your process. So the way we're gonna do this is first, we're gonna change the registry entries to point to our new locations. And then we're going to actually move the files to those new locations. So it's really important to understand that these registry entries are read by the archive server on demand. So as a user is getting, checking in, or checking out a file, the archive server is going to read the registry key entry and determine where to access the file from or save it to. This is why it's so important that we don't have users trying to access files before this operation is complete. For the first step, we're going to open registry editor and browse to computer slash H key underscore local underscore machine slash software slash SolidWorks 
slash applications slash PDMworks Enterprise slash archive server slash vaults slash vault name. So replace that with your vault name slash archive table. We can see the entries for folder names zero through nine and A through F. Each one of these must be set independently. So this is what's happening in the background when you use the archive server configuration tool to add additional folders or change the archive location. Depending on the percentage assigned to a location, it's going to assign a certain number of these registry entries to each listed location. If you split to multiple locations, you may want to choose this method as it allows you to have more direct control of what folders are assigned to which locations. So in this example, we're simply moving everything to the D drive by editing all the registry entries to change the C to D. Now we have to actually move the data. So to do that, we're going to open a command prompt as administrator. Now we're going to use the robocopy command to mirror these folders to the new location so that we can verify the data was successfully moved before the last step, which is removing the folders from the old location. So the syntax for this command is robocopy, all one word, space, and then your source folder in double quotes, another space, then the destination folder in double quotes, another space, and finally forward slash MIR. In this case, we want to copy everything from C colon slash PDM data slash PDM vault to D colon slash PDM data slash PDM vault. We're going to move all the folders to this new drive, but if you've chosen to spread the data across multiple locations, you're going to have to have multiple robocopy commands and make sure that those individual archive folders that you've chosen are moved to the correct location so they match what you did in the registry. So now whether you've chosen option one or option two, we're done with the process and now we can let everybody back into the PDM vault. So now that we've finished, we're going to open up the PDM administration tool, right click on the vault name, choose properties. Now we're just going to click permit logins, make sure the block status field says logins are permitted. And at this point you're good to go and your users will be back able to operate freely without any more issues.